Hey everyone, welcome back to the Maybelline Makeup Loft YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be very, very interesting. I have been challenged to do the reverse makeup challenge, which essentially means I have to do my makeup in reverse. So starting with, I guess, lips, because that's what I would usually do last, and then finishing with primer. I actually had to sit down earlier and literally type out in my phone the order backwards of how I would do this because my brain just can't comprehend doing certain steps of the makeup routine before another. So I've literally had to write it down in my notes on my phone so that I can follow it along and make sure that I don't miss a step. So this is going to be really, really interesting and I really have no idea how this is going to turn out. Let's just jump straight into it. I feel like I'm jumping straight into the deep end here and who knows what's gonna happen. So like I already said, usually I do finish my makeup with my lips. And I guess that means today I'm going to start with the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Liquid Lipstick in the shade Lover. Okay, this looks really quite strange. I don't know why, but I really struggled to do that. So weird. Anyways, moving on to the next second last step that I would usually do in my makeup routine, lip liner. So I'm gonna take the Maybelline Color Sensational Lip Liner in the shade Dusty Rose. I mean, I feel like if anything, it's kind of cleaned it up a little bit, so. That's great. <laughs> okay, so the step that I would generally do before lips is finishing off my eyes, and usually that is with mascara. So I guess I'm gonna do mascara next. So for mascara, I'm gonna use the Maybelline The Colossal Big Shot Mascara. So far, I feel like this isn't too weird. I think it's gonna get really weird when I get to my base. Like at the moment, I'd just say it looks kind of natural. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I have written down in my phone is eyeliner. I guess it's time <laughs> to do some wings. Now, obviously I don't always do winged eyeliner, but I wanted to challenge myself for this video. So I am going to do wings. We'll see how it goes. So the eyeliner that I'm gonna be using is the Maybelline Curvitude Liner. I guess the one good thing about doing this first is that I get to clean up any mistakes that I make, so that's good. Okay, so the next thing I've got written down in my phone is my inner corner highlight. So that is usually the last step that I would do for my eyeshadow. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna jump into the Burgundy Bar palette and I think I'm gonna take this really pretty shade right here. This is usually something that I would wear on my inner corner as a bit of like a pop. I feel like you can barely see it. I mean, I'd usually have foundation and concealer on, which would make the shadows pop, but I don't know. I mean, you can kind of see it in the light, but it's nowhere near as pigmented as it usually would be. Now we're gonna move on to the outer corner, which is what I would usually do towards the end of doing my eyeshadow to kind of help define and add a bit of dimension to the eye. So essentially we're going to start the eyeshadow today with the outer corner. Usually I'd start with the transition, but not today. <laughs> going back into the Burgundy Bar palette, I think I'm gonna pick up this shade here, which is like a dark brown shade, and just pack that onto my outer corner. I feel like this is just gonna go straight over the top of the winged liner. Oh. Again, it doesn't look anywhere near as pigmented as it usually would, because obviously I usually have like a base on my eyelid but maybe it's a good thing that it looks a little bit softer today. <laughs> I feel like there's not really much of a point trying to blend it at the moment because that's what the transition color will essentially do. So I'm just gonna leave it at that for now and move on to my lid color, which for that, I'm gonna take this color right here and place that on the rest of my eyelid. I love this combination together. Like this, this actual eyeshadow look when you do it properly is so beautiful but obviously today I'm not gonna do it any justice. I mean, I think that still looks pretty nice, so. So far, so good. All right, and now I guess it's time for the transition color. So I'm gonna take this soft matte brown shade here in the corner and run that through my crease. 
feel like this isn't really showing up that much. Like it's too soft of a color and needs a base underneath it. But I mean, it's doing the job of blending, but it's just not really showing up much of the color at all. The other thing that I'm noticing is because we've got the shimmer shades down first, as I'm blending, some of the shimmer is transferring up into my crease and like up around here a little bit, which obviously that usually wouldn't happen because your shimmer would be the last to go on. Okay, so the next steps that I have written down are all my eyebrow steps. And usually I would finish off my eyebrows with an eyebrow gel. So I guess we're gonna start with that today. <laughs> the eyebrow gel that I am gonna be using is the Maybelline Brow Drama Sculpting Brow Mascara. I feel like this isn't really gonna like make that much of a difference. Or maybe it will. Who knows? Okay, so next up, I guess I'm going to do some eyebrow powder because that is generally what I would do in my routine next. So I'm going to pick up my Maybelline Master Brow Pro Palette and just use the middle eyebrow shade here to fill in my brows. They look really dark right now, and I don't know if it's just because I haven't done my base. I'm definitely feeling a little bit strange. <laughs> All right, and generally I do start my eyebrows off by filling in the gaps and kind of drawing like hair-like strokes using a pencil. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I'm gonna take the Maybelline Brow Satin and do just that. I mean, I feel like not much else needs to be done to my eyebrows, but technically this is what I would do usually. So I'm just gonna stick to the rules. I feel like that didn't really do much at all. <laughs> so moving on, I feel like this is where things are about to get really, really interesting and really, really bad. <laughs> so the next thing that I have written down is highlighter. Now this is what I'm scared about because obviously for foundation, I use a liquid foundation and then concealer is also a cream product. And that going over the top of powders just makes me really, really nervous. So, yeah, I don't know how this is going to go, but we're going to go in with highlighter now. So I'm going to take my all-time fave. This is the Master Chrome Highlight in the shade Molten Gold. I feel like this is going to look super, super gold as well. Yup. Oh my gosh, it's stunning though. It's probably not going to blend as well as usual either because like I'm just putting this straight on the top of moisturized skin. So it's probably just going to grab on any like oily bits. So I'd usually bring a little bit of that up onto my brow bone as well. Okay, so I'd also usually do some on my nose. I feel like this is extra blinding with no foundation underneath. And I also feel like I'm just highlighting all of my breakouts right now, like doing the complete opposite of what I should be doing. Okay. <laughs> There we go, that's that's highlighter done. So next up, I guess it's time for blush. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Fit Me Blush in the shade 15 Nude. I feel like I'm gonna end up looking like a Neapolitan ice cream, is that what they're called? With like the chocolate pink and white. I think that's what I'm gonna look like before I do foundation. I don't know if this is actually gonna show up. Oh uh, yeah, it is, we just needed to build it up a bit. And now moving on to contour, I'm going to take the Maybelline New York Bricks Bronzer. Here comes the Neapolitan Ice Cream. Wow. I feel like the powders are also really hard to blend just on top of the skin because obviously they just soak straight into the skin rather than being on top of like a foundation, like a base. As soon as they kind of hit the skin, they just grab and they do not blend at all. So usually I would also bronze my forehead. So I'm gonna do that as well. And then I would also do my jawline. Okay, so going back to my list now, we only have a few products left. And the next one that I'm reading here says setting powder. So it's time to set this in place using my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder in the shade Classic Ivory. Maybe this is going to clean it up a little bit. 
So usually I would put this part out everywhere to set my foundation. So that's what I'm going to do, even though there is no foundation on my skin right now. All right. So next in line is concealer. These next three steps are the steps that I am just not looking forward to doing at all, but they have to be done. So next in line is concealer. I am going to take my instant age rewind concealer and conceal my under eyes and the center of my face. See, that's just automatically covered up the highlight that I did on my nose and my chin. Back in the day before I really got into makeup, I actually used to do my concealer before my foundation. I mean, I would only really spot conceal. This was like back when I was in high school. So I didn't really know that much about makeup back then. But yeah, I feel like doing concealer before foundation isn't that like big of a deal. But when you've just done every other step before it it kind of is so <laughs> it is just not blending at all it's just not blending on top of the powder okay well it's definitely brightened that's for sure <laughs> that looks so crazy because it's so much lighter than my skin but i guess the foundation is going to help well, obviously it's going to help even that out because it's pretty much going to cover everything anyway. So I'm going to take my Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid Foundation and apply that like I usually would with foundation. We're just going to deal with the fact that it is probably going to be way off color. Is it cheating if I don't like blend it entirely over the powdered areas? Because I do want to make this look kind of decent. Like I feel like that's the challenge is that you have to make it look somewhat decent. So maybe that's what I'm going to do. My under eyes are so creased right now. It is not even funny. Oh my God, I forgot I had lipstick on. I've just been like patting away over my lips without even realizing. And now my lip line is like all blurred. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. And half of my eyeshadow on this side has kind of blended away. This doesn't look too bad at all. I could 100% leave the house right now and this would be fine. And weirdly enough, I think putting the powders down beforehand has somehow made my skin texture like really, really smooth. It's kind of strange, but it doesn't look bad at all. That is until now because it is time for primer. I really, I just, I just don't know what I'm going to do with this. I mean, I don't know how strict the rules are, but like, could I use this as like a lip gloss or like, I don't know, like add a little bit of dew to my cheekbones. Do I have to use it as a primer? I'm trying to get a bit creative here and think about how I can use this without ruining the entire look. So I think what I'm going to do is apply this, not like I usually would, but technically I'm still following the rules because I'm applying it last. So I'm going to take the Master Prime Hydrating Primer and use this as a lip gloss and a little bit of cheekbone dewiness. So I'm just putting a little bit onto the back of my hand so that I can kind of work with it a little bit better. Because when you start blending it out, it goes kind of glossy. I feel like I'm really breaking the rules right now, but you got to give me credit for creativity, right? Is it going to dry? And then... A little bit on... Ooh! I may have just found a new use for primer. I'm done. <laughs> I am done and I am like really surprised right now. I definitely thought this was going to be a train wreck, but now that it is all done, it looks nowhere near as bad as I thought it would. I mean, I would go out in public like this and be totally fine with it. If you look up close, my smile lines have creased like a mofo and my under eyes have creased as well. But other than that, I think everything else actually looks pretty damn good. There we have it. That is the reverse makeup challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I've actually done another challenge here on the Makeup Loft YouTube channel as well, where I did a full face using wet makeup brushes. And that was like, I want to say fun, but also very disturbing at the same time. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would definitely recommend finding that video next. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Makeup Loft YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys around for some special holiday festive looks very, very soon. Bye guys.